All right, people. So I'm here with um, top ten people in WWE in 2013. 2013. What a shit year that was in WWE. You know, to the to the Rock's title reign, to um, CM Punk's pouring baby face run, to Dolph Ziggler's shitty ass title run, and then being made into a jobber, to Sandow's money in the bank fail. I could just, you know, Brian, that's the top thing, really. The Brian's main event push being a total ass fail. I could go on and on about the 2013 year. Hell, I could make a video that's like three hours long and kind of only cover like a portion of the shit in 2013 that was messed up in WWE. But um, rather than looking at the shitty things in WWE in 2013, I want to hear with the list. Positive, positivity, right, guys? Yeah. Top 10 guys in WWE in 2013. Um, so yeah, let's get, the, let's get the show on the road. Number 10, John Cena. Now you might be saying, oh, you bashed this guy in the past. I have. He's had tons of shitty moments in 2013. But you have to look back at the good things he's done. Five-star match with Punk, or at least near five-star match with Punk in February on Raw. Had a fucking pile driver, a fucking pile driver. When's the last time you've seen that? And just a, a great match. Fast forward to WrestleMania. Had a decent, you know, all right match with The Rock when CM Punk couldn't even carry The Rock's lazy ass to a, a halfway average match. Match with The Rock sucked at the Rumble and in the, in the Chamber. At least Cena carried The Rock to a tolerable match. Wasn't good enough for WrestleMania main event though. And he, he's had, um, Good matches with Brian, and um, yeah, he's had good promos too. Cut a great promo with Brian. Cut a great promo with Orton. So he's had his great moments this year. He's just had a lot of shitty ones. So I had to put him on the list because he's wrestled some good matches this year. He's been in some good promos. Has he been shitty overall? Yeah, I mean he has. But I just gotta put him in here because of the shit he's done. Because he has, he actually does have talent. Yes, guys, he does have talent. So, number ten, John Cena. Number nine, the Rhodes brothers. Now, some tag team that has grouped together as one whole team. So, Gold Dust wrestling really good. I haven't praised him enough. I think that's one guy I have to praise. Doing a fucking hurricane runners from the top rope. You know, you, you don't you don't think you would see a guy like Gold Dust doing that shit. Does this move where he like hops up on his opponent's back and does this somersault sort of move? It's really cool. He's just wrestling very good right now. I don't think I've praised him enough. I, I got it. It's one of the guys that's really underrated, but he is a good wrestler. And Cody Rhodes, another good wrestler. He's, he's got um that disaster kick. I like that disaster kick. I know he doesn't use this move a lot, but the Alabama Slam. It's one another one of my favorite moves. Um. That move where um like avoids the guy in the corner and jumps over his back and does the roll up. Um, that's a cool move. He's got a yeah, so he does have cool moves. Has a great moonsault. Holy shit is that a great moonsault. Um and crossroads is also a pretty good finisher as well. Number eight, though uh, and uh by the way, the Rose Brothers have had some good matches. I I didn't talk about that. The Rose Brothers have had some good matches with various tag teams. The Shield, um, I think the Wyatts, Real Americans, you name it, they've been wrestling good. That's the point. And Rhodes has also had had some good matches before he was in this team as well. Um, now I remember he faced Sandow at Summer Sandwich was a decent match. She had a good showing at the Money in the Bank. So Number 8, the Wyatts. Why it's a, you know, Bray Wyatt, I, I know I didn't like him in the past, you know, when they first came and I really bashed him a lot, but it wasn't so much a bashing them, I just didn't, I wasn't a fan of them, I wanted to see them do some shit, see them cut some promos, see them wrestle some matches, and I've seen it, those two guys, Rowan and Harper, I said they, they don't look like good wrestlers, they're decent wrestlers, they're not horrible, you know, I think they're actually average. I think Daniel Bryan is making them seem like they're better than they actually are. I think they're average wrestlers. Then you got Bray Wyatt, who's a very good mic worker, very good character, very interesting character. I haven't really seen him in the ring enough to get a good feeling, you know, good opinions on his wrestling ability. But he looks pretty decent in the ring. 
so they wrestled some good matches with Brian, cut some really good promos. So they're number eight. Number seven, Real Americans. These guys are so fucking underused. Should be tag team champions. Too bad they fucking aren't. Um, you know, everybody's fucking chance. We, the people. You know, they're fucking over. Probably one of the most over, probably the most over heel tag team in WWE. And yet, they don't get the tag belts. Um, Swagger's a good wrestler. Uh, um, Cesaro's another good wrestler, better than Swagger. Cesaro has had countless good matches with Sami Zayn on NXT, um, Daniel Bryan on that one episode of Raw, Kofi Kingston. He's had a lot of good matches. Swagger even has wrestled pretty decent this year. And even before the Real Americans, you know, and Coulter too, I forgot. He's a promo god, cuts great promos. And even before the Swagger, uh, Cesaro was part of the Real Americans, they had uh, Swagger and Coulter back in February. That was a good gimmick. It was controversial. Everybody was saying, oh, it's too racist, it's controversial. Exactly. That's what you're supposed to do. Be controversial. Be, you know, be edgy. That's what you're fucking supposed to do in professional wrestling. You're not supposed to act like fucking John Cena. So, yeah, really enjoyed the, the tag team work from Real Americans, tag team matches with the Rose Brothers and other various tag teams. They've had some good matches, especially Cesaro. Number six, The Shield. Another tag team. I think this is pretty self-explanatory. I mean, they've had good matches. You know, they haven't really let them cut good promos. I know Ambrose is a really good promo guy, and they haven't really let him. <clears throat> excuse me, do what he's good at. Um, but these, The Shield, are very, you know, very entertaining. Uh, I think they're a little bit overrated, especially Roman Reigns. I think Rollins is the best, followed by Ambrose and Reigns. I know everybody's really different on the ranking of the Shield members, but that's just mine. I think Reigns is very overrated, though. He's got the spear. Well, that's it. Ambrose has got a great promo voice. Rollins is a good wrestler, probably the best wrestler of the group. And Reigns is all right in the ring. Same thing with Ambrose. I think Am I don't know what Ambrose is supposed to be the best one, but I'm not seeing it. So. But they have been a good tag team. Have had good tag matches. And Rollins especially has wrestled good matches. Remember that match with Brian Rollins had? Yeah, that was a that was a really good match. Five, Sandow. Sandow. Guy who's great on the mic. Good promo guy. They don't let him cut any promos. Remember that song he sang to Randy Orton? That was awesome. Yet, you know, no matter how m much more entertaining he is over a guy like Ceno or Orton, he doesn't get any mic time. It's like, what the fuck? He gets dressed up in Santa Claus, knocked out by Big Show in the main event, a tribute to the troops in like two minutes. Now he's put in these random, as he was saying in his, in his promo on Raw last week, put in random, you know, stipulation matches with Ziggler, just made up a fool of by, by jobbing out to a one-armed Cena. So, but he has talent. He's a decent you know okay to decent wrestler he's getting better and he's a really good he's got a really good character and promo so i've i've enjoyed the promos of sandow and even some of his wrestling has been pretty good number four Heyman, guys just goes out there and cuts really good promos every week most of the time very good promo guy you know for lesnar for um curtis axel I really enjoyed him with Curtis Axel because Curtis Axel can't cut a promo for shit, but he's a decent wrestler. So if you put Heyman on him, then you got a good good pairing right there. Same thing with Lesnar. This proved last week he can't cut a promo for shit either. Put Heyman on him, got a perfect pairing. Lesnar's a great wrestler. Heyman's a great talker. Perfect. So Heyman, you know, has pretty much been the voice for the people who can't cut a promo for shit. So. Yeah, Heyman's, you know, Paul Heyman guy, see? <laughs> so yeah, Heyman's, and by the way, I posted a picture of this on Twitter, and Paul Heyman retweeted me. I thought that was pretty cool. So yeah, yeah, but big Paul, Paul Heyman fans, a great promo guy. Three, CM Punk. I don't know if CM Punk <clears throat> um, sucked for the last, like, four months, of, four or five months of 2013. Had bad matches with Ryback. Had bad matches with um, Curtis Axel. 
Now this matches with the Curtis Axel weren't horrible, but they weren't anything special. Had a great match with Lesnar, had a great match with Taker, had a great match with Cena. He's cut great promos. Um, especially when he was a heel. But like the last half of the month, you know, I had a good match with uh, Jericho as well. But um the last half of the month for Punk was mostly shit. Shitty promo. Besides a few good promos with Paul Heyman, he's had no good promos at all. He's coming out there with a smile on his face. Not acting badass. This guy's this guy's supposed to emulate Stone Cold Steve Austin. I don't see any uh, correlation with Stone Cold Steve Austin with what Punk's doing right now. Zero. But he did have a really good 2000 half first half of 2013. The second half pretty much sucked though besides, you know, those promos with Heyman and the match with Lesnar. But yeah, I gotta put him at number three because of the good the, the, he did have some great matches, did have some good promos, so I gotta put him on here. Number two, Brock Lesnar. Pretty self explanatory here since he's only had like a couple matches. As you know, I wanted to put him on here because it's just Brock Lesnar. You gotta put him on here. Carry Triple H to some decent matches. No, the match at WrestleMania was all right. Match at Extreme Rules was a really good match. Then he had a really good match, a great match with Punk at SummerSlam. Then he returned in uh, last week, fucking like a fucking animal, like a fucking beast, you know, like a fucking badass. Putting tackling Mark Henry through the barricade F five, fucking awesome. So I gotta put him up here because he's Brock Lesnar. I think I have my T-shirt around here somewhere. Uh, my Brock Lesnar, here it is. Yeah, I got my Brock Lesnar t-shirt here. So, uh, yeah, big fan of Brock Lesnar. Number one, Daniel Bryan. I think I have my Daniel Bryan t-shirt around here somewhere, too. Yeah, here's my Daniel Bryan t-shirt. Got all my WWE t-shirts. I got a CM Punk one around here, too. Um, but, yeah, Daniel Bryan. Holy shit, this guy had a good year. Um, really started coming on in April and, um, April and May when he really started coming on. Wrestling with intensity, you know, had some good matches, especially with, um, Seth Rollins. Remember that match with Seth Rollins on Raw? Mentioned it, er, mentioned it earlier in this video. You know, then he, fans start really cheering for him, start chanting yes, yes, yes. Then he, um, I remember on Raw too, like in the early beginnings of 2013, he had a good match with Jericho and another good one with Mysterio. Then, um, I can't even re believe I remember that. It's like almost a year ago and I still remember Daniel Bryan vs. Chris Jericho on Raw. Daniel Bryan vs. Rey Mysterio, Mysterio on Raw. Then, um, yeah, uh, what did, did he have a match at the Elimination Chamber? I don't even fucking remember. WrestleMania wrestled a fucking tag match. Wasted talent there. Um... But, yeah, I mean, I, I can't really remember every specific pay-per-view match he's wrestling in, but um, let's, let's just fast forward to SummerSlam. Had a great match with John Cena, or if he, if it wasn't great, it was really good. Then he, he carried Randy Orton to numerous good matches. Pretty, you know, pretty much carried him. It's Randy Orton, we all know he can't wrestle. Um, he's also had good, really good matches with the Wyatt family. Not really good, but he's had good good matches with the Wyatt family. I remember that, um, he had a good match with Cesaro, he had a good match, remember that, um, gauntlet thing he wrestled, um, back on, probably like six months ago, I think he wrestled Swagger, Cesaro, and, um, Ryback, you know, Ryback too, he's carried Ryback to a couple of good matches in 2013, and so, I mean, basically everybody who Brian, you know, like, fucking, Ryback and Orton, all the people who can't wrestle, should be really fucking thanking Dana Bryan for making him look, for making them look good, you know. And you know, the most over guy in the company. But what do they do to them? What is it? What do they do to him? They fucking bury his ass to the fucking ground. He's fucking in the, you know, they buried him so deep, they buried him to fucking China. You know, he's gonna be popping up in China pretty soon because they buried him so deep into the fucking ground. Just a shame, though, like. Most people like Daniel Bryan. It's the most over guy in the company. Best wrestler in the company. But what do they do? They fuck, fucking give the title to Orton. So yeah, that's really going to help fucking ratings and shit. So yeah, shitty year for 2013. But there's my top 10 fav 
favorite people in WWE in 2013. So there you go, people.